Hey team, it's Charlie. So they just announced some of the actors that are coming on this year's Christmas special. So I wanted to do a bonus video for that, as well as talk about my favorite guest actors that have been on the specials. The new people they just announced are really exciting. So I think they're going to go down to some really memorable characters. And just a quick reminder, the giveaway is still running till I post my Q&A tomorrow. I'll explain again at the end of this video in case you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. So starting off with Christmas special casting and updates. The BBC officially just announced five new guest actors are joining the Christmas special. There's Nick Frost of Cornetto fame, Michael Troughton, the second Doctor's son of course, Nathaniel McMullen from Misfits, Natalie Gamid from Coronation Street, and Faye Marseille from Glue. The person I'm most excited about is Nick Frost. He was seen earlier this week walking around the set with Dan Starkey who plays Strax. They've been filming the special at St. Mellon's Golf Club in Vendra Hall in Cardiff. Here's actually a couple of pictures at the manor that they've been filming around. Obviously you have to imagine a lot of snow because this is the Christmas special so of course it's going to be snowing. Now that they've confirmed Frost, it also sounds like the Paternoster gang, or at least Strax, are going to be in the special. I wouldn't expect Strax to be in it though if the rest of the Paternoster was not going to be in it. It kind of explains why they're filming near a Victorian looking manor. They might be back in Victorian times. We don't really know what the story is going to be yet. No word on who Nick Frost is playing, but the best rumor that I've seen so far is Santa Claus, or at least someone very Santa-like. It is Christmas, so it doesn't sound so unusual that Santa Claus would be in a Doctor Who episode. Now that two-thirds of the Cornetto gang are going to have been in Doctor Who, I feel like Edgar Wright's going to have to cave and direct an episode at some point. Wouldn't it be crazy if all three of them got together for the same episode? It would kill Doctor Who's budget, but it would be so amazing. Here's something funny though, Edgar Wright admitted that Russell T. Davies offered him the job of directing the 2005 episode, Rose. That's the series one debut. He said he had to turn it down because he was working on Shaun of the Dead and his mother has not forgiven him ever since. Can you just imagine what that episode would have looked like if he directed it? No idea on who Michael Troughton or any of the other guest cast are playing. There's really two ways that it could go. It could be a straight up one-off, like the 2011 Christmas special, The Doctor, The Widow, and The Wardrobe, or it could deal with the aftermath of the Series 8 finale. Right now with all the rumors about Jenna Coleman leaving, I'm leaning towards the second option. I feel like it's going to be a continuation in some way of the finale. It would be a nice bookend to the Missy storyline, the Doctor's face, and explaining how they're going to proceed into Series 9. With all the teasers, especially from the next episode about Clara having problems trying to balance a normal life with being a companion, I'm thinking that in her head she's starting to think about leaving. Whether or not the actress, Jenna Coleman, is thinking about leaving. So here's a big question. Let's look at some of the images from the teaser for that next episode. Look at her face. Do you think that this is the face of a companion that's going to stay, or does it look like Clara wants to have a go at being normal? I'm still crying about the way that Amy and Rory left, so if Clara really does leave, I can only imagine how it's going to go down. I think a lot of that's going to depend on how the rest of Series 8 goes, so we'll just have to wait and see. But I try to keep an open mind when it comes to Companion, so I won't make my final judgment on Clara till after Series 8. With the Christmas special in mind though, here are my top 5 guest actors to star in a special. I'm just counting the Christmas specials too. Number 5, Lindsay Duncan from Waters of Mars. Of all the female guest stars during the David Tennant specials, she felt like the most badass. And how cool is it that she showed up in Sherlock series 3 last year? I'm not completely familiar with all of her work, but just based on her Doctor Who material, whenever I saw her in Sherlock, I felt like she was going to be a badass. And even though I'm mostly just talking about the actors themselves and not necessarily the characters that they played in the specials, I feel like I enjoyed her character Adelaide Brooks the most out of the temporary companions. And I do consider the Christmas special companions temporary companions when I say that. Either way, she was definitely the smartest and one of the few female companions that did not automatically start fawning all over the Doctor. To be fair though, they were being hunted down on Mars, so there was not a lot of time for romance. But number four, Richard E. Grant in The Snowman. He's one of the few actors I could legitimately be afraid of without having to put on a lot of prosthetics or voice manipulation, like with Nicholas Briggs doing Dalek voice. There are a lot of things that you could say about the series since Moffat took over as showrunner. A lot of things, I'm sure. But I feel like he really pushed for celebrity guest stars in the specials, much more so than Russell Davies, unless you count Kylie Minogue and Timothy Dalton. He did have some big actors. I don't want to sell him short. But Grant's Dr. Simeon felt like a real threat to the Doctor without being too crazy or over the top, and that's all due to his performance. I don't know that we'll ever get to see him again on the series just because of what they did with the character. I did enjoy Grant playing the Great Intelligence during the Series 7 finale, 
but I really miss his Dr. Simeon. But moving on to number three, Ian McKellen, also in The Snowman. I went a little bit nuts whenever I heard he was going to be playing a character. It made a little bit more sense when I found out that he was just providing some voiceover work until Richard E. Grant took over the persona at the end of that episode. Ian McKellen is probably one of the busiest actors in the world. And if you ever wondered why Benedict Cumberbatch or other big actors don't come on Doctor Who more often, it's mostly because of scheduling. But the way Gandalf made that giant snow globe scary was so amazing. I don't know if I'll ever see that again on Doctor Who. Every once in a while you see a villain or a character that's so abstract, it just blows you away. Wouldn't it be crazy though if he just had some brief walk-on cameo in like a future special? It would spawn so many crazy great intelligence paradox theories. Moving on to number two, Timothy Dalton in The End of Time. I think when you consider all the big A-list guest actors and the characters that they played, he is one of my favorite on both counts. There were some really cool guest actors like David Morsey who played really strange characters. Usually when they cast big people, they give them really big roles. Sometimes it just does not work out the way you want it to. Dalton as Rassilon was like watching Shakespeare Doctor Who at its best. He got to be the most infamous person in the history of the canon, probably next to Omega or the Master maybe, and I feel like Russell Davies just told him to go to town. I can only imagine what was going on on set. They do Doctor Who extra now, but I feel like we're only seeing a fraction of what goes on behind the scenes. I'm always really interested in that part of the production. Whenever someone like Dalton, someone that good, comes in, usually directors will just give them notes on what they want, help them stay on story, but what you get from them is so amazing they don't need a lot of direction. You just sit and watch them melt your face off with crazy monologues. I would say his speech at the end of End of Time Part 1 is still one of my favorite Doctor Who speeches of all time. And my number one favorite Doctor Who guest actor in a special, Michael Gambon in A Christmas Carol. How awesome is it that Dumbledore agreed to come on Doctor Who? He didn't have to do that. I feel like for every big actor we see come on, 10 turn the series down for, you know, various reasons. I feel like I don't even need to say too much about his performance. He's one of the greatest living actors in the world right now. Add to that, he also just happens to live in the UK, which makes it a little easier to get to Cardiff to film Doctor Who. There are a lot of amazing international actors from all over the world, but because of the way a lot of the British actors are brought up through the theater, I feel like they have a distinct advantage whenever they do genre shows like Doctor Who. Just as a personal preference, I like the genre that I watch, like science fiction, fantasy, horror, to be a little bit more theatrical even when it's super depressing like Battlestar Galactica. I want it to be up in my face and have a lot of dramatic weight even if there's not a lot of special effects. That's why some of my favorite moments from Doctor Who so far have been Capaldi just talking to himself because he just knows how to carry a scene without special effects. That requires a very special type of actor that you don't always find in America, for example. It's one of the reasons why I am totally fine with all future Doctors being exclusively British, be they male or female. But now it's your turn. Let me know who is your favorite guest actor in a special. I suppose you could totally bend the rules and just include from any of the specials from Classic Who or Modern Who, not just the Christmas ones. Quick update on more Doctor Who coming. The Q&A is going to post tomorrow. If you want to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment. Generally, giveaways are only for people on the team. That's tentatively what I'm calling our extended family here. So if you like to talk about Doctor Who, science fiction, fantasy, be sure to subscribe and join the team. We would love to have you. Because I stayed up way too late last night working on my Constantine video, I was hallucinating a little during Time Heist. To that effect, here are a couple quick corrections from my review. When I was talking about the architect, I was actually thinking about the person who designed the bank. Like the actual architect, not the architect of the plan to rob the bank, who was in fact the doctor. And in regards to the next episode, yes, the doctor is the caretaker. It's just because American and British terms for school positions are a little bit different. I was thinking caretaker meant principal which in the UK is actually the headmaster. In America, the caretaker of a school is called the janitor, and I didn't think the doctor was going to be the janitor of Coal Hill. It's just a wonky language thing, but the Q&A should be up by mid-afternoon tomorrow. You can click here to get it. I'll add the annotation as soon as I post it, and you can click here for my time heist review. Now, everybody, let's high-five real quick before I pass out from exhaustion.